हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन रेपट्रीज आई एम डॉक्टर केदारनाथ ए लोंगानी आई एम एम डी होम्योपैथ आई एम टीचिंग रेपट्री इन भारती विद्यापीठ होम्योपैथिक मेडिकल कॉलेज पुणे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी वन ऑफ द क्लिनिकल रीजनल रेपट्री बेस्ड ऑन स्पेसिफिक कंडीशन The name of the book is Borland's Pneumonia by Douglas M Borland. This book looks very concise but it has got vast information. This book is printed from short hand notes of postgraduate lectures delivered at London Homeopathic Hospital. This repertory was published in 1939. The Indian edition came out in 1997. This repertory contains only 24 remedies. There is only one type of typography used in repertory section that is the Roman one. This book can be divided into three parts. The first part is a introduction. second part is a therapeutic part and third one is a short repertory in the first part the author explains about pneumonia then the potencies high potency low potency and the repetition in the second part here the author explains about the different stages of pneumonia and their corresponding remedies There are four stages which are explained. The first one is a incipient stage. Second one is a frankly developed pneumonia. The third one is a complicated pneumonia and the fourth one is a late pneumonia. The first one incipient stage. Here the author explains the drugs like aconite, belladonna, theramphos and the epicya. While in late stage of pneumonia the author explains about the drugs like antimonium tart carbovage cardica lycopodium arsenic and sulfur the last portion is a short repertory there are total 21 sections are there it begins with generals and ends with the sleep In repertory portion the rubrics are arranged in alphabetical order page numbers are given in front of the medicine for the reference in the therapeutic part now let's see the borland's pneumonia in detail borland's pneumonia by douglas m borland this is the cover page of borland's pneumonia now we will see the information about pneumonia so what is pneumonia pneumonia is an infection that inflames the air sacs in one or both lungs the air sacs may fill with fluid or pus it's called as purulent material causing cough with phlegm or pus also causes fever chills and difficulty breathing a variety of organisms including bacteria viruses and fungi can cause pneumonia pneumonia can be a complication of covid-19 the illness caused by the new coronavirus known as sars-cov-2 pneumonia can range from mild to seriousness older people then people with health problems people with weakened immune system are more prone for pneumonia 
now we will see the causes of pneumonia bacteria fungi and viruses are the main culprit behind pneumonia first cause we will see is a bacteria the most common cause of bacterial pneumonia is streptococcus pneumoniae this type of pneumonia can occur on its own or after a cold or the flu it may affect one part lobe of the lung a condition called lobar pneumonia bacteria like organisms mycoplasma pneumoniae also can cause pneumonia it typically produces milder symptoms than do other type of pneumonia walking pneumonia is an informal name given to this type of pneumonia next cause is a fungi this type of pneumonia is most common in people with chronic health problems or weakened immune systems and in people who have inhaled large doses of the organisms the fungi that cause it can be found in soil or bird droppings and vary depending upon geographic location next cause is a viruses including covid-19 some of the viruses that can cause cold and flu can cause pneumonia viral pneumonia is generally mild but in some cases it can become serious corona virus 2019 covid-19 may cause pneumonia now we will see the complications of pneumonia the first complication is a septic shock and organ failure this may occur if pneumonia causing bacteria enters your blood stream second cause lung abscesses lung abscesses are a condition where pus is formed in your lungs pneumonia can cause this condition mostly in cases where the person has a weak immunity or bacteremia or gum disease older people and men are at greater risk of this condition the third complication pleural effusions pleurisy and empyema there are two tissue layers around your lungs which are collectively called pleura both of these help in smooth breathing however untreated pneumonia can inflate them making them swell and painful if the swelling isn't treated on time fluid may get filled which is called pleural effusion furthermore if this fluid gets infected it may cause empyema the fourth complication is a respiratory failure in case of pneumonia it is possible that lungs may get filled with fluid if that happens then patient won't be able to transfer enough oxygen to the blood or get rid of the carbon dioxide in the blood it is a serious condition because the 
organs need oxygen to work now we will see the investigations the first one physical examination of chest are the first thing that doctor will do to detect the pneumonia in case patient has pneumonia the lungs will make crackling bubbling or rambling sounds in case the physician suspects this condition he may suggest the following test first one is a blood test to diagnose an infection and its cause the next test is a chest x-ray it helps to detect the signs of inflammation in the lungs and figure out its exact location and extent the next test is a sputum culture in this diagnostic test a sample of the mucus is sent to the lab in order to find the cause of infection the next test is a pulse oximetry this test tells about the efficiency of the lungs in moving oxygen through the blood stream a sensor placed on the fingers measures oxygen levels in the blood the next test is a ct scan it helps to view the lungs more clearly giving a detailed picture the next test is a fluid sample if fluid is present in the pleural space of the chest the aim of this test is to figure out the cause of infection the fluid sample will be collected with the help of a needle placed between the ribs the next test is a bronchoscopy this imaging test is recommended for people with severe symptoms of pneumonia and those who fail to respond to medicines it gives a clear picture of airways now we will see the information about the author douglas borland md from 1885 to 1960 douglas borland md was a leading british homeopath in the early 90s in 1908 he studied with kent in chicago and was known to be one of those from england who brought kentian homeopathy back to england during the second world war he was in charge of the royal london homeopathic hospital he wrote a number of monographs like children's types digestive drugs then pneumonias douglas borland died on november 29 1960 now we will see the information about the book pneumonia's book was printed in 1939 by douglas m borland from short hand notes from lectures given at london homeopathic hospital this book gives insight into the types of pneumonia and dr borland's clinical insight in treating it 
बुक कंसिस्ट ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट निमोनिया इट्स स्टेजेस होम्योपैथिक अप्रोच ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट एंड गाइड टू चूज करेक्ट पोटेंसी ऑफ द सिलेक्टेड मेडिसिन बाय डी एम बोरलैंड बोरलैंड न्यूमोनिया इज वन ऑफ द थेरापेटिक इंडेक्स वेयर द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द बुक कंसिस्ट ऑफ थेरापेटिक पार्ट एंड सेकेंड पार्ट इज अ शॉर्ट रेपरटरी टू न्यूमोनिया एंड देयर असोसिएटेड कंप्लेन्ट्स अ शॉर्ट ऑफ रीजनल रेपरटरी अबाउट द बुक ओनली सो नेम ऑफ द ऑथर इज डगलस मॉरिस बोरलैंड इयर ऑफ पब्लिकेशन in 1939 indian edition the indian edition came out in 1997 total number of remedies there are 24 number of remedies which are present in this book the type of repertory so this repertory is clinical regional repertory which is based on specific condition typography a single grade roman is used now we will see the first part is a introduction author explains in introduction about pneumonias potency selection and repetition before discussing the question of prescribing for acute pneumonias the author would like to make certain that you all understand the rudiments of what one is attempting to do when tackling cases from the homeopathic point of view the point is that in homeopathic prescribing your endeavor is to find a drug which will cover not only the actual pathological picture but also the reaction of the individual patient to that disease the whole of your success in homeopathic prescribing depends on your power of recognizing which symptoms are common to every case of infection by a specific organism and which are dependent on the individual reaction of the patient who is infected it is your ability to recognize difference in identical diseases which determines your success and that is why the experienced clinician is far more successful homeopathic prescriber than the inexperienced then there is another difficulty which from the purely practical standpoint of what strength of drug for example potency you are going to use and what repetition you are going to give when you are dealing with acute diseases your choice of potency is very much simplified it is much more difficult when you are dealing with chronic disease from the experience in dealing with the acute diseases there are two attitude of mind one can adapt first one is a low potency the author quotes 
प्ले फॉर सेफ्टी एडवोकेटेड बाय सम सीनियर मेन द वॉट आर द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ लो पोटेंसी बेनिफिट्स इट अवॉइड्स द कॉम्प्लिकेशंस ऑफ द डिसीज देन पेशेंट इज मोर कंफर्टेबल एंड द थर्ड वन इज अ डिक्रीज मोर्टैलिटी रेट देन द लिमिटेशंस ऑफ लो पोटेंसी cannot reduce the duration of disease the patient will run the normal course the patient would never cause a moment's anxiety he would just steadily get better now we will see about the high potency means above 30 what are the advantages or benefits of high potency it reduces the course of duration of disease instead of getting the crisis from 7 to 10th day we get it from 12 to 48 hours after starting the treatment irrespective of the day of the disease author says that if you can cut short the duration of an acute illness you are still further diminishing your complications you are still further diminishing the stress of your patient and you are less liable to get any signs of weakness developing a crisis is always attended by a certain amount of stress possibly a certain amount of risk although this is not likely when the crisis occurs early in the disease as when it occurs after 7 to 10 days of the continuous fever the temperature crashes over a few hours but we don't get a collapse because we have a perfectly healthy patient to start with instead of one whose vitality is impaired by long toxemia the author concludes that by using the lower potencies matching of the drug symptoms with the symptoms of the patient does not require to be quite accurate as it does when using the higher potencies it is easier to prescribe the lower potencies and get a general similarity whereas if you are prescribing the higher potencies you have to get a much more accurate matching now we will see about the repetition of low and high potencies the author states that in low potencies continue the medicine throughout the course of disease so in low potency continue the medicine throughout the course of disease then you will probably find that you have to give more than one drug your first drug modifies the picture and you then get indications for a second prescription and possibly a third before the crisis takes place regarding frequency of administration of remedy when you are using a low potency it is quite sufficient to give the drug about once in 4 hours now we will see about the higher potencies 
it is advisable to continue the administration of the selected drug until the temperature has reached normal and remain normal for at least 6 hours. As regards the frequency of administration of the drug, it is wiser to give the drug every 2 hours. The reason being that you want a number of stimuli in a comparatively short period of time in order to obtain crisis within 12 to 24 hours. Now we will see about the plan and construction. Book consists of therapeutic part and short repertory. In therapeutic part, the drugs are given under different stages of pneumonia by four groups. The first one, incipient stage. Two, frankly developed pneumonia. Third, complicated pneumonia. Subpart, mixed infection or alcoholic patient. Second one, creeping type of pneumonia or definite bronchopneumonia in adult. The last one, fourth one, is a late pneumonia. Now we will see stages of pneumonia with remedies. The first stage is a incipient stage. In the incipient pneumonia stage, there are four drugs which are commonly indicated. They are 1. Aconite 2. Belladonna 3. Ferrumphos 4. Epicac Now we will see the role of aconite in pneumonia. In the aconite pneumonia, there is always history of sudden onset, history of exposure to cold. The same evening person comes down with fever, which is very acute, rapidly developing condition. The constitution of aconite is strong healthy, a robust person. So, constitution of, our, of aconite is strong, healthy, robust. There is a high temperature, marked excitement, restlessness and acute anxiety. The pulse is full and bounding. The face is flush. Skin is hot and dry. Mouth is dry. There is an intense thirst. Desire for cold drinks. The cuff of aconite. Dry, short, dryness of the throat. Pain left side of the chest. Now we will see the second drug. Ferrum Foss. The ferrum force picture also is fairly definite. As a rule, the pneumonia takes a little longer to develop than in aconite. For instance, if you get an exposure one afternoon, you are unlikely to find the ferrum force picture developing before the following morning and you may get ferrum force running on to about the third day of disease until you have a definite obvious consolidation. So aconite sudden onset, ferrum force slow onset. Appearance of 
aconite and ferrumphos aconite looks brightly flush face and hot dry skin while in ferrumphos localize flush over malar region palar round the mouth in ferrum patients are more tired indisposed to talk sensitive to any disturbance any noise loud speaking distress them they want to be quiet the tongue of ferrum fos is swollen red third day white coating the cuff of ferrum fos incessant tormenting cuff excited by sense of irritation lower down behind the sternum excited by draught of cold air the fever of ferrum fos during febrile attack patient is chilly sensitive to cold aggravation early morning 4 to 6 am the sputum is bright red used in early stage of consolidation so ferrum fos is used in early stages of consolidation the next drug is belladonna the onset of the belladonna attack is just about as acute as that of aconite so in belladonna you will find acute attack you often find a belladonna case developing the same evening as the patient has been subjected to exposure the attack is always very severe so in belladonna you will find severe attack it is attended by a violent temperature running up to 105 degree or over with intense excitement of the heart and a pulse which feels as if it would almost burst through the vessels in belladonna cases with the fever they become delirious they always have a bright red face and very often you will find a generalized flush over the whole skin and the surface burning hot to touch in belladonna you will find widely dilated pupil then you will find photophobia then sensitive to light prefers dark room mouth of belladonna mouth is dry hot burning with intense thirst tongue of belladonna the tongue is dry dark red in pneumonia especially you will find right sided more commonly affected headache headache of belladonna they are congestive headache or throbbing type of headache you will find in belladonna the next drug is epicac the fourth of these drugs for the acute stage of pneumonia is epicac and it applies much more to children than it does to adults i do not know if you were taught as we were that 80% of children's elements start with an attack of omitting no matter what the child is going to develop 
I think it is very nearly true with the results that many of these children with a commencing pneumonia or possible even more commonly with a commencing bronchopneumonia show very definite indications for epicac the onset of pneumonia in epicac is slow during pneumonia child has hot sweaty face the temperature of epicac is not so high as in other drugs the chest in epicac diffuse generalized rattle suffocative attacks with retching the sputum is stringy difficult and blood stain the blood is bright red patient is sensitive to stuffy atmosphere in bronchopneumonia there is a good deal of nausea so nausea is marked in epicac epicac patients are thirstless now we will see the group 2 is frankly developed pneumonia symptoms of frankly developed pneumonia and their corresponding homeopathic medicines have been discussed the medicines discussed are one bryonia two phosphorus three varatum viridi fourth chelidonium author says in milder weather you can come across more bryonias and in colder weather more phosphorus author says in epidemic you will see more varatum viridi pneumonias the chelidonium pneumonias are little less common now we will see the drug bryonia in bryonia the onset is gradual history of going out for one or two days then complaining of malaise followed by feeling ill followed by sneezing blocking in the head followed by temperature the face of bryonia is dusky in color patient feels hot so in bryonia the patient is hot and has damp sweat patient complains of frontal headache which is worse by movement and exertion the tongue of bryonia in bryonia pneumonias you will find heavy thick white coating tongue mouth of bryonia mouth feels dry and desire for large quantities of cold water is a mark symptom desire for large quantities of cold water look look of bryonia heavy dull and dislike having to talk so bryonia patient dislikes having to talk they are short temper they easily get annoyed they think about business they talk about business they worry about business in pneumonia right lung involvement is more than left there is sharp intense pleuritic pain which is worse by movement and mainly on right side patient likes to lie on the side that is affected breathing is short 
the patient is hot the next drug is phosphorus the phosphorus pneumonia develops more quickly than the bryonia one in appearance you will find the phosphorus pneumonia have a brighter red flush skin surface is hot and moist breathing is difficult hands are little shaky twitching of the alinea the cough of phosphorus is tormenting irritating cough cough associated with rawness or burning in chest patient feels better by chin tilted up and head thrown well back chilly patient so phosphorus is chilly phosphorus patient dislikes being left alone the sputum of phosphorus early stage dry cough and little sputum followed by red streak in the sputum and then is rusty sputum then you will find high temperature with full and strong pulse the next drug is varatrum viride in varatrum viride you will find high fever probably running up Two hundred and five degree. The patient complains of feeling of intense pulsation. He feels as if his heart simply pounding out through the chest wall. Pulse full, pounding, violent delirium, profuse sweat. without drop in temperature everything they take tasting abnormally sweet the tongue of varatum viride you will find thick coating and bright red streak down the center this is a peculiar tongue It is bright red streak down the center pneumonia with high temperature full pounding pulse generalized sweat thirst and red streak down the center of tongue are the guiding features of varatum viride so generalized sweat thirst and red streak down the center of tongue are the guiding features you will find certain amount of photophobia in varatum viride patients the sputum sticky chest pain while coughing sputum of varatum is midway between phosphorus and bryonia it is not so bright as phosphorus and not quite dusky as the bryonia the next drug is chelidonium in chelidonium patients they have loss of appetite and general discomfort preceding the onset of their pneumonias so you will find loss of appetite appearance is dusky yellowish tinge right side more flush than the left chelidonium patients are lethargic aggravated by movement and they are irritable pain more right sided pain more towards the front and go right through to the scapular region 
the tongue of cheridonium is yellow expectoration is profuse they desire for hot drinks the aggravating time at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and 4 o'clock in the morning now we will see the third group that is complicated pneumonia important homeopathic medicines for complicated pneumonia are discussed in this section in complicated pneumonia complicated by the fact that the patient has mixed infection or by the fact that he is very unhealthy patient to start with and secondly the creeping type of pneumonia or the frank pneumonia these are the types of cases which are quite difficult to handle author says it is difficult to choose right potency in latter stage of pneumonia it requires considerable amount of judgment to give right potency author says in mixed influenzal pneumonical infection giving too high potency is dangerous while dealing with frankly alcoholic patient with pneumococcal infection it is quite safe with higher potencies author in his practice tend to give 1 m potency rather than 10 m in mix infection it produces less disturbance and definite reaction now we will see the sub part of complicated pneumonia a mix infection or alcoholic patient which are the drugs one baptisia two pyrogen three lacasis four mercurius fifth hyparsal six rustox then the b second subtype creeping type of pneumonia or definite pneumonia which are the drugs 1 natrum salt 2 pulsatilla 3 sinega 4 lobelia now we will see the drug baptisia for mix infection or alcoholic patient taking the ordinary case of rather virulent pneumonia in which there are indications for baptisia there is usually a history of a fairly slow onset of the disease occasionally in the course of a very virulent epidemic you will find baptisia cases developing with astonishing rapidity even in a few hours but in the majority of the cases in an average winter the onset is much slower so in general in baptisia the onset is slow the mind of baptisia b fog there is a mental confusion patient dull difficulty while thinking and answering the speech is slow the patient is drowsy there are aching pains the bed feels hard it hurts them to lie 
moves to get more comfortable position restlessness is mark the face is puffy cyanotic appearance eyes are half closed mouth is offensive the tongue is brown dryness but do not get excessive thirst so in baptisia you will find dryness but do not get excessive thirst operation in the chest and afraid to lie down lying causes suffocation in baptisia the sputum of baptisia sputum is scanty sticky difficult to expel the next drug is pyrogen the pyrogen pneumonias are usually much more rapid in their onset than the baptisias mentally the patients are quite different you will always get a certain amount of loquacity in your pyrogen patient so in pyrogen you will find loquacity they are rather impatient they talk fast they talk a good deal and they are liable to be rather irritable the temperature of pyrogen running up to 104 205 degree and accompanied by hot sweat the tongue of pyrogen tongue is dry brown dry coating heat followed by shivering you will find in pyrogen heat is followed by shivering bed feels too hard and they move about to try to get an easy position which makes them restless illness begins with aching of leg so there is a general operation of chest soreness of chest wall respiration very rapid and shallow the sputum peculiar of pyrogen sputum is pussy and offensive so sputum is pussy and offensive there is discrepancy between the pulse and the temperature you will find rapid pulse and low temperature either or opposite way so is important you will find rapid pulse and low temperature either or opposite way the next drug is lacasis lacasis is very similar to baptisia and pyrogen i think in the majority of cases you will find your lacasis pneumonias cropping up later in the winter or in the early spring so in lacasis pneumonia generally comes in latter part of winter or in early spring lacasis patients are cyanotic swollen then they are sensitive to touch frank delirium or frank delirium tremens with all sorts of delusions they become suspicious they think that they are being poisoned they refuse to take the medicine the tongue of lacasis the tongue is dark swollen dark red difficulty in coughing there is a horrible suffocation difficulty in breathing 
दे हैड टू गो टू स्लीप एज देर इज अ सेंस ऑफ सफोकेशन वॉयल एंड सर्जिंग हेड एक यू विल फाइंड इन लैकेसिस विथ काफ फुलनेस इन द चेस्ट लैकेसिस इज जनरली अ लेफ्ट साइडेड ड्रग so commonly left sided pneumonias are seen feeling of tightness around the throat is marked so feeling of tightness around the throat they cannot bear to have blanket up around their neck the sputum is scanty sensation of lump in the chest there are rattles in the chest they have hyperesthesia to noise and smell the next drug is mercurius i think you are liable to meet with mercury pneumonia about the same time of the year as lachesis once that is in the latter part of winter the face of mercurius is puffy sickly looking mercury patient is more sweaty and more greasy tremors which are generalized so you will find generalized tremors in mercurius ulceration on corners of mouth with more profuse watery salivation so salivation is marked in mercurius aphthous patches in mouth then thirsty patient so mercurius is a thirsty patient cough dry racking cough the cough is very peculiar so cough in double paroxysm so cough in two paroxysms you will find in mercurius more right side involvement you will find in mercurius that two right lower lobe more affected the sputum of mercurius the sputum is profuse liquid dark and offensive the next drug is hyparsulf where you are dealing with a hyper pneumonia you always have a septic type to extend with and you get the impression that the patient is very ill as a rule hyper patient is very ill as a rule hyper patients are palish in appearance although they may have a somewhat hectic flush the skin surface of hyparsulf is usually moist with a rather sour smelling sweat in hypar you will find sour smelling sweat patient is extremely sensitive to cold the patient is chilly so hyparsal patient is chilly mentally they are difficult they have horrible discontented dissatisfied critical outlook they are sensitive to noise their speech is hasty so hyparsal you will find hasty speech in hypar pneumonias there is a deep split in the center of lower lip so you will find split in the center of lower lip the cough of hyparsal the cough is choking strangling spasmodic frequent paroxysms striking things about cough is that it is easily produced by any cold so cold aggravates in hyparsal the temperature 
swinging septic type of temperature accompanied by profuse sweat so temperature accompanied by profuse sweat in general patient is worse after sleep the aggravation timings are 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening or 2 o'clock in the morning they have acute paroxysms of cough during this time the next drug is rustox the other chili drug for this mixed type of infection is rustox i think in the majority of cases the rustox pneumonia develop somewhat slowly and you will very often get a history that the onset of the pneumonia was caused by the patients being out and getting soak damp in particular is the exciting cause of rustox pneumonia especially cold damp so in rustox you will find cold damp aggravation in pneumonic attack rustox patients are horribly distressed they say that if they could only move about a little more it would help them physical restlessness is marked in rustox generalized aching pain which are easier if they keep on the move so better by movement tongue is red or red margin or red triangular tip tongue so in rustox you will find red triangular tip tongue metallic taste in mouth cough troublesome constant tormenting then there is a irritation behind the sternum rustox respiration is shallow hurried and difficult rustox patient is sensitive to cold the sputum is profuse liquid dark color or blood stain in general rustox patients are aggravated at night so in rustox you will find night aggravation the next sub type is creeping type of pneumonia or definite bronco pneumonia in adult the type of unpleasant case that starts as a frank lobar pneumonia and probably 24 hours later a patch appears somewhere in the uninvolved lung and the next day there is another patch somewhere else without much clearing up the old area this is the type of case in which these following drugs are indicated the four drugs are one natrum sulf two pulsatilla three sinega four lobelia now we will see the drug natrum sulf in pneumonia or bronco pneumonia there is gradual onset so in natrum sulf you will find gradual onset it is frequently indicated in post operative pneumonias means for example pneumonia after appendix or pneumonia after gall bladder operation mind mind of natrum sulf 
they are extremely depressed they feel gloomy do not want to be disturbed they do not want to be questioned they quietly say for heaven's sake please let me alone sensitive to noise and heat the tongue of natrum sir is grayish green coating then you will find acute pain in the chest worse by coughing better by sitting up and supporting the chest peculiar in natrum self you will find the patient feels better by sitting up and supporting the chest physical restlessness pneumonia accompanied by occipital headache aggravation time is 5 o'clock in the morning so morning 5 o'clock is the aggravating time or little early 3 or 4 am the sputum is greenish or bile stain in natrum self left side more involved in pneumonia that to left lower lobe so in natrum self left lower lobe is more involved the next drug is pulsatilla in pulsatilla history of cold catarrh which has spread down into the chest slowly advancing progressive pneumonia you will find in pulsatilla so slowly advancing progressive pneumonia appearance is dusky puffy looking the pulsatilla patients are mild gentle yielding type worried and afraid that not going to get better they want somebody about and they want attention pneumonia with dyspnea there is a tightness in the chest they want to have doors and windows open so better in open air acute air hunger dyspnea worse in the evening so pulsatilla patient is worse in the evening the sputum is tenacious choke in the efforts to expel it yellowish and blood stain violent choking cough with raw chest in pneumonia there is a dryness of mouth without thirst peculiar so dryness of mouth but there is no thirst tongue is white coated the most comfortable position is lying on the back prop up a bit arms raise out from sides or pushing their arms up above head they are sensitive to heat they are hot patient the next drug is sinega author says there are more rails coarse rails which are pretty generalized in the chest there is definite patch of consolidation the appearance is flush hot sweaty skin there is a respiratory embarrassment the main complaint is always a feeling of intense operation in the chest and difficult breathing tired very and phlegmatic there is anxiety the cough is constant violent cough there is aching in the chest wall along with cough associated with restlessness though the patient feels far too hot and sweating and want to push off their blankets yet an actual current of air will start them coughing 
in pneumonia there is hoarseness generally right sided complaints but tend to spread from right to left in senega they have loud harsh breathing with respiratory distress there is a high temperature the signs of fading heart early in the disease so signs of fading heart early in the disease now we will see the next drug is lobelia they are pretty ill they look pale they have a sweaty skin surface feeling of horrible operation and sense of fullness in the chest the cough of lobelia is spasmodic dry cough and attended by nausea respiratory complaints and nausea is increased by movement and exertion they are better when they are stand still nausea with cough along with salivation nausea better by eating or drinking along with nausea there is feeling of emptiness in the epigastrium localized edema of chest wall violent paroxysms of coughing mark aversion to movement it increases respiratory distress and nausea so aversion to movement mentally depressed want to be quiet with pneumonic attack they may complain of severe sacral pains group 4 late pneumonia we now come to the consideration of drugs for the latter stages of pneumonia either a pneumonia you have not seen in the earlier stage or one that is not resolving well not clearing up satisfactorily and in which you want to clear the chest finally the drug use are for late pneumonia the drugs are antimonium tart carbovage calicap lycopodium arsenical and the last one is a sulfur now we will see the drug antimonium tart in the adult you expect to find the symptoms of antimonium tart cropping up late in a pneumonia you do not usually get them in early stages and by the time the patients have gone on to an antimony tart state they are seriously ill the appearance of these patients is suggestive they are pale they have a pinch look rather a bluish coloration of the skin and they are covered with a cold sweat the nose looks rather pointed pinch in and very often it has a somewhat sooty color owing to the extensive chest involvement you will find the alinea flapping so flapping of alinea they are mark in antimonium tart and with the obvious effort to get as much as air is possible so owing to the extensive chest involvement you will find the alinea flapping 
and with the obvious effort to get as much air in as possible. All the muscles down the side of the neck are standing out and the patient is struggling for breath. The lips in typical antimony tart cases are rather livid. Although if the patients are running towards a collapse as they sometimes do in antimony tart, the lips may tend to become paler and in any case they are usually very dry. They want to be left alone. They do not want to be looked at. The tongue of antimonium tart has a white coating. So white coating tongue you will find. And is pasty. As if painted with a white enamel. Antimonium patient is thirstless. Acute intolerance to milk. Excessive secretion of mucus. Can hear moist bubbles in the chest. The cuff you will find is a rattling cuff. Now we will see the drug Carbovage. In Antimonium Tart. We have just discussed one type of very serious patient. The next one which is just about as serious is Carbovage. And at first sight it is a little difficult to distinguish between it and the Antimonium Tart. However, there are certain distinguishing points. In appearance, as you first see these patients, there is very little to distinguish between the two. The Carbovage looks just as ill. He has the same sort of pinch appearance, the same respiratory embarrassment, the same kind of flapping nose and the same bluish color. I think in the majority of cases, the Carbovage patient is a little more blue and the Antimonium Tart patient is a little more livid. So Carbovage patient looks more blue while Antimonium Tart patient is little more livid. As a rule, in the Carbovage or in Carbovage case, there is less cyanosis of the extremities which are more likely to be pale and covered with an icy cold sweat. So in Carbovage, icy cold sweat is marked. Air hunger. Yet feel frightfully cold, mark thirst, foul taste in mouth, excessive area of consolidation you will find in Carbovage, extreme exhaustion, distension of abdomen and flatulence, he sleeps into aggravation. For acute collapse, author advocates CM potency repeated every 10 to 15 minutes. So, in acute collapse, author advocates CM potency, which is repeated every 10 to 15 minutes. Now, we will see the drug Kalikap. I think. Kalikap tends to be indicated from about the fifth day of disease onwards. 
although you may get indications for it earlier it is very serious case but it is a case that you see before the really critical stage comes along very often it is a case which has responded to a certain extent to one of your previous drugs but you are not satisfied with its progress the patient is still running a temperature and although not more comfortable is not clearing up it is in that type of case that you find your kalikab indications appearance of kalikab pale flabby is out exhausted appearance puffy look anxious and worried expressions dislikes being left alone mouth is dry has burned feeling the cough of kalikap cough is dry suffocative with profuse sweating the sputum is scanty difficult to expel sensitive to draught of air kalikab is a chilly patient the draught of cold air which produces the cough they want to sit upright kalikab generally involves the lower lobes so kalikab generally involves lower lobes aggravating time is 2 to 4 am so night 2 to 4 am patient sits up at 3 am with feeling of operation and tightness in the chest in acute emergency author recommends 1 am potency not very high potencies author says ordinary cases respond to 10 am repeated frequently now we will see the drug lycopodium of the last three drugs i thought of looking at i think lycopodium probably follows the kali picture more closely than any of the other drugs it is very similar in many ways in the majority of cases you do not get indications for lycopodium before the second half of the course of the average pneumonia in other words it is not usually indicated until after the fourth day as a rule you will get a history that at the beginning of their illness these patients were mentally fairly active and that they are now becoming very tired very very rather worried about their condition and not a little frightened appearance of lycopodium anxious worried and frowny appearance they are domineering so lycopodium is a domineering patient they have demands on their attendants they desire attention gets up with cross tempered mood flapping of nostrils yellow discoloration of teeth sour taste in mouth tongue white coated thirst for warm drinks flatulence gases tightness in the chest cough is difficult paroxysmal violent spasmodic the sputum is scanty tough difficult to get up yellowish gray blood stain right side more involved so lycopodium is a right sided drug 
bloated feeling they are better by sitting up sleeps with eyes half open dreams of fatal accidents aggravation time peculiar time of lycopodium is 4 to 8 pm author says lycopodium cases respond to 10 am repeated two hourly the next drug is arsenic al arsenic is one of the drug which you will require only in the collapse stage of pneumonia crisis you seldom get indication for it during the active stage of pneumonia arsenic patient has mental and physical restlessness in early stage of collapse you will see patient constantly tossing about never still for a moment so arsenic is a restless patient as collapse goes on he gets weaker and weaker until he is hardly able to move extreme mental anxiety extreme fear he feels he is going to die wants attention afraid of being alone they look pale cyanotic covered with cold clammy sweat arsenic is a cheery patient they have rigors intensely thirsty so arsenic is a thirsty patient mouth dry desire for sip of water so this is a peculiar thirst of arsenic desire for sip of water they do not have sufficient strength to cough there is a burning pain in the chest sputum is scanty because they do not have strength to get it up collapse temperature with running pulse and fibrillating heart with weakness complaints are worse at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock author has advised one name most useful potency repeated two hourly the next drug is sulfur author says there is no disease from which humanity suffers in which you may not find sulfur not indicated there are various occasions in pneumonia in which you want sulfur it may be indicated in any stage of the disease from second day onwards you can prescribe when one of the difficult cases which is not clearing or one in which you have had indications for drug which has done a certain amount of good or you cannot get clear indications for anything and the patient is not getting well an intercurrent dose of sulfur will set up a response appearance of sulfur dusky dirty looking all the orifices are red nose ear eyes they are red untidy look feeling of intense weariness low spirited burning hot with burning hot feet the feet are burning they want to stick out of bed better by uncovering they have alternating patches of heat and cold for example hot hand and feet 
and chilliness in bag. So some part is hot and somewhere the chilliness is there. Means hot hand and feet and chilliness in the bag. They have worrying cough. Cup associated with acute pain in the chest. Left side of chest more involved in sulfur. The mouth is dry, offensive, coughing after they have been asleep. They wake up with horrible feeling of pulsation in chest, feeling that they are going to die. In distressful condition of sulfur pneumonias, they have peaceful dreams. Aggravation timings of sulfur are 5 o'clock in the morning or 11 a.m. When sulfur pneumonias feel bad, sulfur patients are sweaty. They have had heavy smelling sweat. They are aggravated by talk. Author says, for sulfur patients, do not allow visitors. Author says, in acute stage, sulfur patients respond well to highest potencies, CM, repeated too hourly. But in stages of exhaustion, it is wiser to administer 1M at same interval. Now we will see the third section, which is a short repertory. The repertory portion contains 21 chapters. They start from journals and ends with sleep. Now we will see special features. In the repertory part, the rubrics are arranged in alphabetical order with main rubrics in capital and sub rubrics are given in italics. Page numbers are given against the drugs for the reference in the therapeutic part. For example, cough, rattling. In front of that you will find antimonium tart. In front of antimonium tart you will find 46 number. Here it means that we can refer antimonium tart in page number 46 of the therapeutic part. Cross references are given as C, S W. -E. In general chapter under the rubric drugs, potency, reputation, and drugs with which to follow are given for some remedies with page numbers for reference. We will continue with special features. For example, general drugs. You will find under the heading general, then you will find drugs, you will find aconite, varitum viridi. There is rubric called potency in general chapter which contains accuracy of matching symptoms, the page number 5 and 6. Then high potency, you will find reference at the page number 358. Then under high potency you will find advantages, course, frequency and repetition. Then you find low potency. The reference is given on the page number 3825. Under low potency you will find course, frequency and then you will find repetition. Then under the heading general, few rubrics we will see. Strong, healthy, robust. You will find the drug aconite. Then under the heading general, Short, short neck, overweight, middle-aged woman, 
the drug is given is sinega then under the mentals business things and talk shop so talk shop business things of business the drug given is bryonia then under mentals looks at hours to be the drug given is antimonium tart then under mentals you will find thinking difficult so difficult thinking the drug given is baptisia then under the heading tongue clean in lobar pneumonia so clean tongue in lobar pneumonia the drug given is ipecac grayish green tongue the drug given is natrum sulf yellow tongue the drug given is cheridonium and varatum v under the heading chest in chest apex the drug given are aconite and lachesis then under the chest lower lobe involvement the drug given are calicarb and natrum sulf then specifically right lower lobe involvement the drug given are calicarb and marxol then under the heading cough cough chapter aggravation cough aggravated by putting hands out of blanket the drug given is hiparsulf cough ameliorated sitting up and holding the chest the drug given is natrum sulf cough paroxysmal double paroxysms so cough in two paroxysms the drug given is marxol rattling cough so you will find rattling cough the drug given is antimonium tart the next chapter you will find sputum the sputum is bile stain so bile stain sputum the drug given is natrum sulf yellow sputum or yellowish gray sputum the drug given is lycopodium pussy sputum or sputum is pussy the drug given is hiparsulf and pyrogen the next chapter sleep chapter in sleep dreams so dreams of fire the drug given is hiparsulf the pleasant dreams the drug given is sulfur then under sleep you will find eyes half open the drug given is lycopodium here it ends with our lecture on borland's pneumonia thank you everyone for watching the video on borland's pneumonia if you like the video then please do subscribe and forward thank you we'll meet again with a new video on series of repertories